Hello, hello, I'm Dominique Soxa, and I am welcoming you to Over 50 and Flourishing today. Oh my goodness, talk about flourishing. My guest is gonna blow your mind. You probably know her. If you've ever used It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye, which I've only recommended a million times on my YouTube channel, then you definitely know of her. Jamie Kern Lima is the founder of It Cosmetics, sold to L'Oreal for a billion dollars. She's so impressive. She wrote a book a couple of years ago called Believe It. She now has a new book out called Worthy. And it's so important to talk about our self-worth. It is the foundation of everything. It's our launch pad. She's joining us today to help us all feel more worthy. Today's sponsor is Honey Love. Listen, say goodbye. Please say goodbye to the underwire, the bulky fabrics, everything that traps heat, that pinches, that binds. Every time you open your bra drawer, you're just, you're cringing because you know you're going to be uncomfortable by the end of the day. Can I just tell you that ever since I switched over to Honey Love, I honestly feel like there's nothing there. It's the kind of bra that you can wear all day. You get home and you don't feel like you have to run to your bedroom and take it off. Treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% at honeylove.com slash over 50. Just use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash over 50. After your purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show. Tell them we sent you. Treat yourself to Honey Love because you deserve it. Hey ladies, let's talk about a fact as we enter midlife, and that is that body odor can increase. Kind of a weird and wild thing, very unexpected, but it's true. And Lumi really helps us ladies 50 plus. They have a pH optimized formula. It is safe to use. They've got a whole body deodorant. It's also baking soda free and paraben free, and it can last up to 72 hours. So if you're looking to sort of nip BO in the bud, can I just suggest Lumi starter pack for you. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, kind of like a mini body wash or the deodorant wipes, and free shipping. And as a special offer for my listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code OVER50. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equals to more than 40% off the starter pack. Use code OVER50 for 15% off your first purchase at Lumi deodorant.com. That's code over 50 at L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. Have you ever gotten undressed only to realize you were in front of an open window? Well, going online without using ExpressVPN is kind of like being naked in front of a floor to ceiling window. I mean, there are creepers out there who can see and record everything you do online, even in so-called private browsing mode. That's because when you use the Wi-Fi at work, a hotel, Airbnb, or even at home, the owners of that Wi-Fi can also see everything that you're up to. That's why I never go online without Express. ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is an app that sends 100% of my traffic through their encrypted servers, so my browsing history cannot be seen by anybody. So please make sure to protect your online activity with the VPN I trust to keep me private. Visit expressvpn.com slash over 50 today. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash over 50 to get an extra three months free. Expressvpn.com slash over 50. Jamie, I am so thrilled to have you. Like I said earlier, before we even started recording this, I'm a huge fan of yours. You're, first of all, you know, I told you, you're, you're it, bye bye, under eye, changed my life forever. Okay. You make an amazing product. You have an incredible story. I read your first book, Believe It. I was thrilled to get your book worthy that's coming out. And that's why we're here talking today. So can I first congratulate you and pass on that worthiness praise to you for all that you have been able to not just do, but who you are in this life, because that's what worthy is all about. Mm, Well, thank you so much. It has been a long journey um, Mm -hmm. and one that's still going, one that's still going. I am. Thank you for those kind words. I, uh, I'm, I'm really honored to be here with you and to have this conversation because I think it matters 
so mm-hmm. much. I mean, right now, 80% of women don't believe they're enough. And uh, uh, 75% of female executives deal with imposter syndrome. 91% of girls and women don't love their bodies. And what I know mm-hmm. for sure is, you know, when we do not believe we are enough as who we are, it is a lie. It is mm-hmm. a lie that costs us so much uh, in, in our lives. And I'm just um, really on a mission to help you know, every single person like unlearn those lies that lead to self-doubt and ignite the truths that wake up worthiness. And But I'm very much on a journey of doing that every single day. And so to hear you share those kind words, um, thank you so much. And mm-hmm. and also, I just truly hope and feel the best is yet to come. The most meaningful work is yet to come because yes. I have to tell you, I am so passionate about helping women build self-worth because uh, it. I feel like it's the one thing that can really change everything. And it's, it's why I wrote worthy and, you know, um, and thank you so much for mentioning, believe it as well. My first Mm -hmm. book is really my story of learning how to believe in myself, but worthy is really the playbook on like, how do you believe in you? So it's very much, uh, like over 20 tools on how to build self-worth. And so I'm just so, I'm like, I'm so excited and honored and fired up and passionate to be here with you, Dominique. This is going to be an amazing episode. So I love that, Jamie. And you know what? And I will say this too, because I've read both books and yes, believe it is truly your story, but you know, you don't shy away from your personal story in work in worthy as well. You use nuggets and you use anecdotes throughout. And I love in the beginning how you talk about, this really starts when we're young and you use the example of a child in a classroom who suddenly knows the answer to something, but is afraid to raise their hand. Let's talk about that self-doubt and how young it actually can set in. Oh my goodness. Well, for each and every person listening to you and I right now, watching you and I right now, I if you just imagine back to your childhood, because a lot of us have these moments, whether we remember the exact day it happened or we remember it in general, but Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times as kids, we, we share how we feel. We say what Mm -hmm. we mean. We are who we are. (laughs) And I remember, and a lot of us have this moment. I remember the moment as a little girl in a classroom where I knew the answer. Mm -hmm. I knew the answer. And for the first time ever, decided not to raise my hand. And it was the first time I didn't want to be wrong. I self-doubt set in. I thought maybe people will make fun of me. I thought maybe I'll stand out so I'll get kicked out. Mm -hmm. All those thoughts started going through my head. And for a lot of people, what that looks like today is it looks like, are you still that person who knows the answer, Mm -hmm. (laughs) who, who knows you know, how you feel or what you mean, or has this idea that could add value or has this talent or this gift that you want to share with the world, or you want to, you know, or, or art that you want to express or ideas. And, you know, you're still the one, maybe not raising your hand, doubting yourself out of it, kind of dimming your own light. Mm -hmm. And so many people, even it could be as simple as on a zoom meeting at work, you have an idea that could fundamentally be so valuable uh, to your team or to the business, or but you don't share it because just in case it, they think it sucks or you're wrong or whatever, mm-hmm. and you know, or you know, it looks like you're an adult and you want to make new friends, but you actually decide not to go up to people at church or not to go up to people in the coffee shop just in case uh, your olive branch and do you want to be friends is not accepted. Um, It looks like you have a book inside of you that you want to write, but you doubt yourself out of your own destiny. Uh, And so, yeah, I opened the book with that idea because I think that self-doubt, self-doubt can Mm. kill more dreams than almost anything else. And, uh, and, you know, and and this big question really um, that really had me kind of obsessing over so many of the tools in the book worthy was when I asked myself this question of what has self-doubt already cost me in Mm -hmm. my life and what has it already cost me in my relationships and my friendships and my joy and my relationship with my own body and my, you know, ideas and my ambitions Mm -hmm. and my goals and my hopes and my dreams. And it's like, whoa, uh, self-doubt has cost me way too much. And I, I know at my core that, you know, our self-doubt is 
our thoughts in our head and it is it is not true <laughs> it is not true and i also know that you know both self doubt and also faith and and even belief yes both take an equal amount of energy to manifest something that hasn't even happened yet and we have the power to decide oh am i going to give my energy and my mm -hmm. focus to doubt or am i going to give it to faith and belief and yes. um and so this has just been a, a long journey and a mission and i'm just so i'm so excited about it because the moment the moment we learn to believe we are worthy that is the moment that ideas are shared that hands are raised that businesses are launched that art is put out into the world that generational cycles end that you know businesses are born that unhealthy relationships and friendships end and healthy ones are formed because in life we don't get what we want so often we get what we believe we're worthy mm -hmm. of and so our self-worth can be our ceiling in so many areas of life you have so many tangible, practical steps to help people journey to that road of worthiness. But I know this has been an ongoing journey for you. You struggled with your own sense of self-worth growing up as a child, a young woman. How does shame and this self-doubt that you talk about play in, and you phrase this beautifully, you call it the cancel culture of yourself. And that's mm. going to strike a chord with a lot of people. Yeah, I, you know, we are in a time where, of course, cancel culture is so sensitive. All these things mm -hmm. are happening all around us. Everyone's scared to say what they mean. They don't want to get canceled online. They don't want to get canceled at work. And one thing I talk about is I think one of the most prevalent forms of, of cancel culture that I think no one is talking about mm -hmm. is actually us canceling ourselves before we even try. Right. Before we even try. And we do that for so many reasons. And it's it's really why, uh, and you mentioned shame and self-doubt. Mm -hmm. And I go deep in, in this in Worthy about, you know, all of the lies that lead to self-doubt. And, 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 and several of them tie to these stories we tell ourselves about ourselves, about maybe the shame we're carrying. And we sort of like disqualify ourselves from thinking we're enough or we're worthy. We mm -hmm. believe the lie that somehow my past is going to determine my future or somehow my past disqualifies me from, you know, love and belonging and success and my goals and my dreams. And I am, um, you know, you mentioned that I share some stuff in this book and mm -hmm. I have to tell you, I, um, there are some things I share in this book that I had a lot of shame around and yeah. that I carried shame around for a long time. And there's stuff I have never shared, even in my first book that actually was my story. Mm -hmm. And I, I just made this decision, you know, with Worthy, with this book, I'm donating 100% of the proceeds. Like for me, this is my life's greatest work. And it is truly about leaving no girl, no woman, no person left behind and knowing they're worthy. And when I wrote it, I just know at my core, it is not about me. And mm -hmm. so I share some stuff that yes, maybe will come <laughs> with some judgment, <laughs> with some like, whoa. Uh, but I also know there's a lot of people that see what I've done in business and they think, wow, could that ever happen to me? Mm -hmm. Or did she get lucky? Or did, you know, all the things, or, or maybe they see some of the stuff I've I've accomplished and, and people, it's yeah. so often we say things to ourselves like, oh, well, that could never happen to someone like me. We don't say it out loud, but we think those thoughts. And I share a lot of stuff about my past and past mm -hmm. mistakes, past failures, past regrets, past situations that I put myself in because I believe the mm -hmm. lie that attention uh, uh, is love. Mm -hmm. I believe the lie that achievement is love. In fact, most of my life, I believe the lie that if I could just achieve enough, and for anyone out there who is a people pleaser or a perfectionist <laughs> yep. or an ambitious person, a lot of times we believe this lie, if I could just achieve enough, then I will finally be enough. Then I will finally feel enough. And those are lies that I believe most of my life. Yeah. And they led me to situations that some of them I carry shame around. And so I share some of them because I think that my hope is for every person that reads Worthy that that it feels like truth, it, it feels like joy, and it tastes like freedom. Mm. Because so many of these burdens and, and, 
and, and, and thoughts and things that are holding us back in our life are simply the meaning we're attaching to them and we can attach a new meaning to them. And so many of us are walking around carrying labels attached to ourselves, like shameful, like failure, like rejected, like unwanted, like not enough. And I had those labels most of my entire life. And I talk about the process of, first of all, realizing that we're carrying around these labels. And a lot of times we think they're permanent. And, mm -hmm. and when they're stuck to us, sometimes we don't, you know, maybe it was that past heartbreak and, and, and we have labeled ourselves unwanted or not good mm -hmm. enough. Maybe it's the job that didn't see our value. Maybe, I mean, there's so many things that we go through and we often think we're alone, that we're the only one having rejection or failure or, you know, all the things because you go on social media and everyone's showing their highlight reel and, and no one's kind of sharing these things. And so we, yeah. we go through life so often with these labels stuck to us and they can feel like lead balloons on our wings as we're trying to fly and life. Life, and we often think these labels are permanent. And I talk in Worthy about how they're so they're really like post-it notes with a light adhesive that you could just peel them right off once you're aware of what it is and replace them with new, true, empowering labels. And, and I talk about the process and go through a whole, um, a whole worksheet and a whole process on how to do this and how I've done it in my life. Because there's some, you know, when I was waitressing at Denny's, in college, I, I I literally took a job waitressing in a strip club, and never told anybody. Never mm -hmm. told my parents. Um, I have friends that know because they were there, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I've never even shared that until this book. And yeah. I I share how uh, I've date been in unhealthy relationships, mm -hmm. confusing what I thought looked like love, and accepting yeah. people in my life that hurt me. And not believing, thinking, not understanding that deep down inside, I didn't believe I was worthy of more than that. And, and I talk about this, the journey of navigating those things in our life and how to let go, because we all have them, how to let go of those disempowering labels that are actually lies. They're just labels we've decided. Sometimes someone else puts it on us and calls us something or says something about us and we let it take root, but we have the power to remove those labels and to replace them with new, true, empowering labels. And, you know, this journey uh, is, is just so important. And I think, I think too, just to touch on this is one of the biggest, I think, aha moments in my journey mm -hmm. of building self-worth yeah. uh, was really the revelation. And this for me was a revelation that what I thought my entire life I needed was more self-confidence, but what I really needed was more self-worth. And so, mm -hmm. and they're different. And yep. I thought they were the same thing. And most people right now, as you and I are talking, believe they need more self-confidence and they might, but that is very different than self-worth. And, 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 and if you want me to touch on the two, I can, because for me, when I learned the difference, I had realized I've been chasing all the wrong things. Wrong things, yeah. Right? It's, Thinking it's they would lead to fulfillment and they don't. Thinking they yeah. would lead to me feeling enough and they don't. You draw a very clear distinction and I love that you do that. Um, that worthiness is not performance-based. We are worthy as we are. And that's something yes. that can be very hard for people to swallow. What? You mean just just as I am? Well, God made us perfectly and wonderfully made. We are deemed worthy as we are. And I love how you work really hard in this book to separate. You don't have to earn worthiness. You don't have to perform. It's not about how much we can do. It's not about a resume. It's we're worthy as we are. And what I also love, and, and you touched upon this, your journey to this point. And like you said, you're, you're, you're not there yet. None of us is there yet. We're still journeying, but you, you are so vulnerable in sharing stories of hanging out with the wrong crowd when you were young, you know, getting arrested, or like you said, you know, dating the guy who really wasn't deserving of you because he wasn't willing to make that commitment to you. And I just love how real raw and vulnerable you are in this book throughout, because it, it's what, I think better enables you to drive these points home. You're like, yeah, 
happened to me too. Yeah, this is my journey and maybe it's your journey too. Um, I can't wait to dive into more with you. My guest today is Jamie Kern Lima. She is the author of Worthy, How to Believe You Are Enough and Transform Your Life. It's an incredible book. Her book before this, Believe It, a New York Times bestseller, amazing as well. We're going to take a real quick break, Jamie, to thank our sponsors and we'll be back right after this. I hate bras that bind. I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. Let's face it, February is the month of love, so why not fall in love with your bra? And if you never have, well, there's a first for everything. Today's sponsor is Honey Love. Listen, say goodbye. Please say goodbye to the underwire, the bulky fabrics, everything that traps heat, that pinches, that binds. Every time you open your bra drawer, you're just, you're cringing because you know you're going to be uncomfortable by the end of the day. Can I just tell you that ever since I switched over to Honey Love, I honestly feel like the there's nothing there. It's the kind of bra that you can wear all day. You get home and you don't feel like you have to run to your bedroom and take it off. They are lightweight, but they are supportive. They give you the coverage. They even help prevent uh, bra bulge in the back. So many different types. I want you to fall in love with your bra. Not hate it anymore. You can burn the rest. Keep your honey love. Treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% at honeylove.com slash over 50. Just use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash over 50. After your purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show. Tell them we sent you. Treat yourself to Honey Love because you deserve it. Hey, ladies, let's talk about a fact as we enter midlife, and that is that body odor can increase. Kind of a weird and wild thing, very unexpected, but it's true. And Lumi really helps us ladies 50 plus manage potential BO. You guys know Lumi was founded by an ob Gen to work on all body parts, not just the pits, but I mean, feet, privates, anywhere you can experience any type of an odor. They have a pH optimized formula. It is safe to use. They've got a whole body deodorant. It's also baking soda free and paraben free, and it can last up to 72 hours. So if you're looking to sort of nip BO in the bud, can I just suggest Lumi starter pack for you. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, kind of like a mini body wash or the deodorant wipes, and free shipping. And as a special offer for my listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code over 50. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equals to more than 40% off the starter pack. Use code over 50 for 15% off your first purchase at lumideodorant.com. That's code over 50 at L-U-M-E D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. Have you ever gotten undressed only to realize you were in front of an open window? How'd it make you feel? A little exposed? Well, going online without using ExpressVPN is kind of like being naked in front of a floor to ceiling window. I mean, there are creepers out there who can see and record everything you do online, even in so-called private browsing mode. That's because when you use the Wi-Fi at work, a hotel, Airbnb, or even at home, the owners of that Wi-Fi can also see everything that you're up to. That's why I never go online without ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is an app that sends 100% of my traffic through their encrypted servers, so my browsing history cannot be seen by anybody. It's like a super incognito mode that actually works. So please make sure to protect your online activity with the VPN I trust to keep me private. Visit expressvpn.com slash over 50 today. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash over 50 to get an extra three months free. ExpressVPN.com slash over 50. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you are enjoying. Wait, I'm going to rephrase this. I know you are enjoying my <laughs> guest today. She is just incredible. Jamie Kern Lima, the founder of Fit Cosmetics. Jamie, you and I can, first of all, we could have a whole podcast just on your makeup brand alone. I can't even tell you how many times I have featured it in my makeup tutorials throughout the years. So you're a rock star just for doing that. 
But you have taken on the project of writing two books, Believe It, and now your new book, Worthy, that's coming out. And that's what we're talking about today. Um, the, the role of worthiness in our lives. And before the commercial break, we talked about a couple of things that you really, really emphasize in the book. And the fact is that worthiness is not based on performance. It's based on who we are. And it's also based on what God says who we are. And so I want you to elaborate on those two things. Yes. These are two really, really big things because so many of us think if I perform better, I'll finally feel enough. Mm -hmm. If I achieve enough, then I'll feel enough. And we uh, constantly are are, are are trying to accomplish things in our life that we think will finally make us feel enough, not realizing that those things often build self-confidence, which is really, really important, but they actually don't build self-worth. Mm -hmm. And just to break this down, because this may be, even if someone does not go by the book worthy, and I sure hope they do, but even if they don't, just this one thing from this episode, it can, I mean, for me, it was life-changing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because so many people think they need more self-confidence and what they actually need is, is more self-worth. And, 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 and just to break down the two and then explain like how self-worth struggles with it shows up in our life. Uh, so self-confidence, super important part of life, super important part of our journey to fulfillment. Self-confidence uh, is, while it's an internal trait, it's so much based on the external. It's how we assess our skills and abilities, mm -hmm. our willingness to try and go for it, how we feel we stack up and measure and compare to others, how much of the world's definition of success we think we have. If we're winning or losing at any moment, our self-confidence fluctuates constantly and it's fragile. And they do studies that show like the boxer who wins the fight is 30% more confident automatically. And, and, uh, and, and it's important, but it's very different than self-worth. Self-worth is the deep internal knowing mm -hmm. that you are worthy of love and belonging exactly as you are, not as your past or past mistakes or past failures, not as how much of the world's definition of success or winning you're doing, but literally exactly as you are. And here's the thing for anybody listening right now who's ever had, because we all tell ourselves these things like one day when I finally get that thing, then I'm going to feel happy. I'm going to feel fulfilled. I'm going to feel enough. It's going to solve all my problems. And for some people, that thing might be getting married or mm -hmm. memorizing the entire Bible or, 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 or getting that dream house or hitting a fitness goal or getting six pack abs or or a certain job title or a certain amount in the bank, whatever it is. And for a lot of us, we work so, so, so hard, often for years. And then we finally get that thing, which is maybe kids or the dream house or the job title, whatever it is. And we arrive at it and then we're like, okay, I got the thing and we're happy for a minute. And then before we know it, we're back to feeling like something's missing, mm -hmm. like it's not enough, like we're not enough. And so then our solution is usually, oh, I've just got to work harder. I've just got to level up and achieve the next level. And this becomes a never ending journey to unfulfillment because in the pursuit of all those things, we build self-confidence, which is so important. And it's awesome. We, we're growing. We're contributing often beyond ourselves. Those three things are very important. But while we're building self-confidence, none of our performance-based stuff mm -hmm. builds any self-worth. It just does not, which right. is why it's a never ending cycle. And, and our self-worth becomes our ceiling. And people think, well, wait a minute, if I learn to, if I actually just think I'm enough exactly as I am, mm -hmm. will I become complacent? Well, I lose my ambition. It's like, oh no, actually it's the opposite. The higher and stronger your self-worth, the more ambitious you become because yes. you know, like, oh, okay, if I go for it and I fall flat on my face, I might, you know, it might shake my confidence for a minute, but it could not touch my self-worth and self-worth is different. And I like to describe it as our self-confidence is like the house we're building with all the rooms and the art and mm -hmm. the decorations and all the things, but our self-worth is the foundation beneath yes. that house. And our house will only ever be as stable and as secure as that foundation um, and, and for anyone listening, having like this aha, like, oh my gosh, wait a minute. Okay. This is me. Um, 
self-worth, it, it usually shows up when we have struggles or challenges with self-worth, it usually shows up in three main ways in our life. When we have low self-worth, because, and by the way, we can be crushing it out in the world. We could be doing great in our job or, you know, crushing our fitness goals, but underneath it all, if we mm-hmm. do not feel like we are enough, it often shows up in three ways. It, it looks like we're stuck in an area of our life and we don't know why, like, like, we're stuck. Like we have a book idea and we don't know why we're not writing it. Or Mm -hmm. we want a potential partner in our life or a friend or whatever. And we don't know why we're not getting on the dating app or going out and socializing. And we think, oh, I've just got to get more experience or I've got to, you know, maybe, maybe we're working inside a business, but no, we're born to run one. We're like, why am I stuck and not doing anything about it or not putting my art out into the world. Mm. We think, you know, we tell ourselves stories like, oh, I just need to get more experience or put more reps in or, you know, uh, build my skill set. And and that might be true. But usually the underlying reason why we're stuck is because deep down inside, we do not believe we are worthy of the thing. And so we do not go for it because our self-worth becomes our ceiling. And then if you have low to medium self-worth, what that can look like is you go for the thing, you put yourself out there, you, you know, you, you, but then you hit a ceiling along the way, or you sabotage it along the way, which I did this at many points in my life. I was having great success in work, but I was sabotaging other things, not realizing it was because deep down inside, I didn't believe I was worthy of them. Mm -hmm. So this looks like you meet a potential partner. But then you just don't know why you're not attracted to them and you put them in the friend zone or you you write the full book, but then you don't send it out and you scroll Instagram for eight hours a day instead. Uh, and then if you have medium to high self-worth, which is a lot of people, and what that looks like is you'll go for the thing. Like you'll make it happen. The whole world will cheer. Everyone will say, great job. And you will still feel like something's missing. You'll still feel unfulfilled. Mm. You'll still feel like you're not enough. And so those are really the three kind of main ways um, that it shows up. And and for a lot of us, because we just learn how to build self-confidence, we just learn, oh, you know, and that should make you feel enough. It doesn't. Self-confidence helps you become confident in your belief and your skills and abilities, and you're more likely to try and go for things. But that has nothing to do with the value you see in yourself as, a, as who you are innately. And this is why, too, Dominique, that we can, we can, you know, someone can land on the moon and come back and destroy their whole life. Or they can win a gold medal mm-hmm. or they can ac- win the lotto. And here's the thing. No matter what we accomplish, you still take you with you. That's right? right. And that is why the you that's deep inside an identity level, your own self-worth is so important to raise the ceiling on. And you mentioned that um, you're talking about faith and God. And one mm-hmm. of the tools I go into in Worthy, it's a chapter called, Who Are You Really Doubting? Yeah. <laughs> and what I realized is that in my life, I say I believe God's word. I say I believe that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm-hmm. I say I believe all of this, but then all of a sudden, I doubt I'm enough. I doubt I'm qualified. I doubt I'm made with, I doubt my body. I doubt my, all those things. And what I realized, and this was a huge aha for me, so I talk about it as one of the tools and worthy, I realized almost all the time when I'm doubting myself, what I'm actually doing is trusting my own thoughts and doubting God's word. Mm -hmm. So really in those moments, I don't have self-doubt. I believe in my thoughts. I have God doubt in those moments. And for me, flipping that around and asking myself, who am I really doubting here? And who am I going to choose to believe in this moment? And I will in an instant, and and not everyone has a faith that they practice, but if you do, you sure do have a self-worth shortcut right here. (laughs) Because for me, being a Christian, I, in in an instant, when I'm about to walk into a room, I'm about to doubt myself out of it Mm -hmm. or think I'm unqualified or think no one's going to like me or think I don't belong, I will instantly 
remind myself of God's word. Who's you and are. I exactly. And mm-hmm. who's walking in that room with me and yes. how I, and how he, he gave me everything I need. Uh, oh, and he wouldn't have set up the room to happen if he didn't. And, and just having that, it, but it's so often that even as, as people who have strong faith or have a relationship with Jesus, we can, it is so tempting to actually realize we're, you know, we're actually not trusting our faith and we're trusting our own thoughts and our own self-doubt. And, mm-hmm. and for me, it's an instant uh, self-worth shortcut to ask ourselves, uh, who am I really doubting? Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. who am I going to choose to believe in this moment about my own worth? Right. We're going to talk about your very practical and tangible steps to worthiness in a bit, but I, I do want to point out, and it, and you note this in the book as well, we cannot derive our worthiness through others. And Jamie, think about how often this happens, that we try to prove ourselves worthy through men that we attract, right? If I earn his love, if I work hard enough, if I if I do enough, I will be deemed worthy. And we are setting ourselves up for failure if we try to find our worthiness through the eyes of others. Yes, exactly. And 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 in believing that that's where we get our worthiness, mm-hmm. we start telling ourselves uh uh we start doubting ourselves into believing lies like mm-hmm. And on top of needing them to feel worthy, if I'm actually me, then it's not going to work at all. If I'm me, I won't be loved. If if people only knew how odd or strange or quirky or shameful or different or whatever I am, then I won't be loved. So I need to show up in this world as my representative. Uh-huh. I need to show up as who this other person thinks I need to be in order for me to get their their love, in order for me to feel worthy. It is a lie on top of a lie on top of a lie. Yeah. And the problem with this is, is, is that, you know, we have such a loneliness epidemic right now, and yet we have everyone showing up as someone they're not. Right. And imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. Uh, impo- right. 75% of, of even female executives deal with imposter syndrome. And also... In our, in our friendships, at church, mm-hmm. in our relationships, in social settings, in our job, we have learned to literally believe if I am me, I won't be loved. I, yeah. I don't have what it takes. I'm not enough as who I am. And, and, and so we show up as our representative, right? The role that we think we need to play to, to, to get everyone's approval. And there's some huge problems with that when it comes mm-hmm. to self-worth. So number one, every time you show up inauthentic as someone who you are not, every time you say what you don't really mean and behave how you don't really feel and you show up in that uniform that has your name on it, that's your representative, uh, you are telling yourself you are unworthy as who you Mm -hmm. are. And it starts to chip away at your self-worth. But the other problem is it is impossible. We all crave love and belonging and connection and it is impossible and all the studies show this it's impossible to have another a true 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 authentic connection with another human being whether mm-hmm. it's a friend your partner your community online and your social media pages or your customers in your business it is impossible to have a true connection with another human being unless you show up fully authentically as who you mm-hmm. are and it's exhausting you if you don't. It's exhausting yes. to keep that facade going. Yes. And you never feel true love no matter, no. even if people love this representative you're showing up as, you cannot receive that because it is not truly who you are. So Correct. it never, ever works. And 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 there's a whole chapter called You're Not Crazy, You're Just First um, mm-hmm. and Worthy, <laughs> which is the power of how the things we think are wrong or strange or odd or different about us are actually the things most right with us. They're and our superpower. The, yes, yes. And and learning how to embrace that mm-hmm. uh, tastes like freedom. Yeah. It is, oh my gosh. And it is like, it is, it's so important, right? Because because everything else has led us to feeling lonely, feeling unworthy, and these solutions that we think are going to work never do because it's impossible. It's so true. Jamie, this is so great. We, we're going to take another uh, quick commercial break, but when we come back, you're going you're gonna to lay it out. You're providing the roadmap. You're, we're doing this 
Jamie Kern 2.0. Um, this book is phenomenal. It's worthy how to believe you are enough and transform your life. You know what, Jamie? This is a podcast that every mom should get their daughter to listen to, by the way, because this is an area where young women really, really struggle. But we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want you to lay out what you have written out so beautifully in your book of how women can achieve worthiness right after this break. Support for today's episode comes from Jenny Kane. If you ever open your closet doors, scratch your head, and just struggle with, what do I wear today? How about taking the guesswork out of it? Jenny Kane is a California brand through and through, and their classic pieces make getting dressed easier than ever before. I absolutely adore my Jenny Kane sweater. In fact, I'm wearing a taupe one right now and I get so many compliments on it. And again, I just feel like it's a go-to staple piece. I also adore the mohair boyfriend cardigan and the alpaca boucle cocoon crew neck. Another great one. I can go on and on, but trust me, you need to check them out. They have shoes as well, loungewear, I'm telling you, there is so much, and they just believe in the art of simplicity, not overdoing it. Classy, classy, classy. Hey, find your new uniform at JennyKane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code Dominique at checkout. That's 15% off your first order, J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com, promo code Dominique. Let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about. Y'all, I have to share something funny with you. The other day, I got a photo of from my friend Holly and her daughter, and they both had on their Bond Charge red light face mask. Yes, I am spreading the word because it works. They wanted to use them actually for different reasons. Holly was really interested in wrinkles and fine lines. Her daughter was more interested in acne and skin breakouts and whatnot, but they were so intrigued to learn that the red light face mask can help with other things like sore jaw, eczema, even migraine headaches. Can you believe that? Scar tissue, wound healing, razor burns, ingrown facial hair. I know that's really not a big thing for us ladies, but you know, maybe for our guys. I love my red light face mask. I too got it for wrinkles and fine lines. And I just think it makes such a difference. It's so easy to use only 10 to 20 minutes every day. You can put it on and clean the house and it's like no biggie, right? Just knock it out. They're both near infrared and red light boost collagen and elastin production. Super lightweight on the face. And of course, it does not get hot. Uh, there's a one year warranty and a super sleek, lightweight design. Again, I use mine for the same reason that Holly is, and it works. Go to bondcharge.com slash over 50 and use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash over 50 and use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. Welcome back. My guest today, Jamie Kern Lima, the author of the book Worthy. You see it right behind her over her shoulder. Okay, we are just going to speed through the tips, the worthiness tips to get us there. And then I really, really want you to get her book because I think you will find it worthy. Okay, Jamie, go ahead. You know, the very first thing I'm going to dive into some of these tips that I just want to share that you shared so beautifully and powerfully is every single person listening to us right now is fully worthy. And that mm -hmm. is the most beautiful part. So mm -hmm. this is not a book about, oh, here's all these things you have to learn that are going to be. It's like, oh, no, actually, it's all the lies we have to unlearn mm -hmm. that lead to self-doubt. And it's about like igniting the truth of who you are that is fully worthy. And, and nothing you have ever done in your past, no past mistake or failure or regret or heartbreak or thing you wish you could do, mm -hmm. none of that impacts the innateness uh, of worthiness that is you. You're fully, fully worthy exactly as you are. And so in Worthy, I'm just going to read a couple of these for you really mm -hmm. fast. So okay. we have, the book is really about um, this journey of unlearning those lies and then rebuilding, right? The, mm -hmm. the, the, the truth of your own self-worth. And so the first section is all about uh, uh, talking about, you know, how to uh, tap into your self-worth and a big thing, right? The fear of rejection or failure yeah. um, and past rejections or failures often have us believing somehow we're a reject or we're a failure. And that's when it's taken root in our self-worth. And so we dive deep into how to change your relationship with rejection to change your entire life. 
Um, and then we talk about owning your story and unlearning the lie that mm -hmm. somehow your past is going to determine mm -hmm. what's possible for your future. We dive into these lies um, that we all, a lot of us need to unlearn called uh, my weight impacts my worth. Mm -hmm. And this lie, Dominique, about uh, don't wait on your weight to live your best life. Yep. So many of us have missed out on fun, on invites to things, on you know showing up on on moments in life because we are waiting on our weight. And for me, yeah. I did that for too many decades. And this is about unlearning that lie and setting yourself free. Uh, we talk about uh, the lie: I should only be seen when I'm happy. Mm, a lot that's of a us, good one. right? Is yes. that a big one? Big we one. show up to our friends only when we are happy or when we have good news to mm -hmm. share. And then when we have other emotions that are perfectly healthy, we hide them and mm -hmm. we think we're unworthy of sharing them. And this talks about how to unlearn that lie. I should only be seen when I'm happy. Uh, we go into the lie. I don't deserve better. A lot of us stay not just in unhealthy relationships or jobs we're not fulfilled in, but sometimes even in unhealthy friendships yep. uh, where our friends don't show up for us the way we show up for them. And somehow we believe this lie, I don't deserve better. So we go into that um, on how to unlearn that in your life. Um, this one, oh, this one, mm -hmm. I don't have anything special to offer. Malarkey. <laughs> uh, right? Yes. Yes. And so many people think, oh, I'm not going to launch the business. It's already been done by mm -hmm. way better by other people. I don't have any smart ideas. Like my ideas have already been done. But I don't have anything special to offer. First of all, there is only one of you in the entire universe. Right. And you cannot prove me wrong in saying this, that if you are willing to do something authentically to who you are, mm -hmm. it has never been done before. It's different. It is impossible, right, to say that you have nothing special to offer. And, you know, when I entered the beauty industry, there were tens of thousands of makeup companies. I could have so easily been like, oh, it's already been done before. Right. Or anytime a new restaurant. Offer? Yeah, what do I have to offer? Anytime a new restaurant launches, oh, well, that cuisine's already been done a million times. Mm. Yes, but if you do it authentically to who you are, it has never been done before. And Anyhow, the lie, I don't have anything special to offer. Um, this one's big. This next one, chapter nine for people pleasers. Um, mm. I need to please them to love me. Me, yeah. Oh, uh, yes. And that's exhausting. And it's exhausting. And yeah. so many of us are raised to be people pleasers by really mm. well-intended uh, people around us. And mm. every time we we please other people when it comes at the expense of betraying ourselves or when it means we're yeah. not showing up as who we truly are, we just feel more lonely and disconnected than ever. So we go into that lie about how to, um, about that you need to please others to be loved because it is not true. It actually just creates a barrier of disconnection between you and them that you can mm -hmm. never feel that love when you're not who you truly are. So um, that is a big one because the majority of us are. Uh, this next one, if I stand out, I get kicked out. Mm. This is believing the lie because so many women, we bond over problems and then we, we're quick to say, oh, I can't fit into my pants or my house is a mess. But if we have victories like, oh my gosh, I just pulled up to the parking space and the meter was full and I got, or, oh, I, you know, all the, we'll hide our victories and we'll bond over problems. And we think yeah. if I'm too great, I'll get hate. And this is about, mm. and, and so we're walking around dimming our own light because we think it'll help us fit in. But all that does is set the, the example for generations to our daughters, to our nieces, that they should dim their light too to fit in. And this is about unlearning that lie. Yeah. How sad. And you know, men don't do that. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. And then you just look at kind of the ripple effect. And so how do we unlearn that? And, and, and we can together, right? Like it just takes one of us celebrating another woman's victories, calling it out, like celebrating her, um, where we start to normalize that, where we, you know, we stop going around dimming our light. Um, and, and we make sure that when another girl or woman shines hers brightly, mm -hmm. that we, we don't Celebrate try to blow that her. flame out. Yes, yes exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, we dive into, uh, the lie you and I talked about actually, if I'm me, I won't be loved. Yes. Um, 
and then how labels are permanent. We go into, oh my gosh, in the book, um, uh, The Secret to Fulfillment and um, understanding the deep why for your own worthiness journey. Mm -hmm. Um, So many people have goals and they can say why they're so important, but then they never actually accomplish them. And it's often because they didn't identify a true reason something way bigger and deeper than themselves for why they need to. So an example in in your own journey for building self-worth, yes, you can probably at the beginning say, well, I just really want to stop doubting myself out of my own destiny. And that's really, really important. But the next question is why? And then you ask why beneath that and the why beneath that. And eventually you get to something like, well, actually, I want to break a generational cycle in my family Mm -hmm. and I want to show my niece, what's possible, or my granddaughter, what's possible, Mm. or my sister, what's, you know, or um, I want to, you know, get through, I want to make it through all the things I've gone through so that I can then help other people make it through those things and get a deep sense of purpose through that. It could be, I want, you know, as Robin Roberts would say, my mess to become my message, my test to become my testimony, right? But having that deep why that's bigger than yourself, we go into how to do that because I have found in the years of building at Cosmetics, getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rejections, I had to, and no's and doors slammed in my face. I had to lean on that deep why Mm -hmm. uh, in order to know, okay, what I'm doing is bigger than myself. I've got to keep going, even though it's not going well. And that was one of the many tools that I talk about in the book on how I turned that idea in my living room through years and years of hundreds and hundreds of no's and teetering on bankruptcy for years and eventually turning every one of those no's into a yes and building what became a billion dollar business, which is even wild to say out loud, but (laughs) God can dream a bigger dream for us than we can for ourselves. And that is what happened there. That's right. We have to release the limits of our own belief system to be able to yes. fully self-actualize. And, you know, you you wrote beautifully to that journey in Believe It. Girl, what you went through and that whole QVC experience and everything, that was just <laughs> wild stuff, wild. But it's, you know what, it's so good because it just goes to show, you know, you're no different. Yes, you know, you created and sold a company for a billion dollars, but you are no different. You deal with the same root issues that every single woman deals with and as you perfectly lay out and worthy, it's not acquiring a skill set, but it's actually, it's kind of like peeling the layers of an onion of all of these lies and these things that either we have spoken over ourselves or others have spoken over us to finally get to the core of who the woman is and who you are. And it may leave you crying because you may actually find yourself. And that's Mm -hmm. the whole point of this journey. And Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a beautiful book. And I'm, I'm so glad to have you on over 50 and flourishing. I'm, I'm going to ask now, please come back. There's so much to talk about. I, I know you've got a crazy to. schedule, but I know my audience just adores you. And I'd love to see more of you, Jamie. Oh, thank you so much. I would love to. And thank you for the honor of talking about all things worthy today, because this is the one thing. Yeah. Like, I hope that, you know, I, I just can't wait to see people who are listening to this with you and me right now, posting about it, their favorite takeaway of this episode, yes. tagging you, tagging me, um, and just sharing their own worthiness story. Yeah. Because I think for a lot of us, it's something that we think if we just ignore it, it won't be an issue, but it mm-hmm. literally is the one thing that impacts every area of our lives. And uh, and when we learn to build our self-worth, and you're never too young to do it, you're never mm-hmm. too old to do it. Like right. that's what's so beautiful about self-worth, whether you're 15 or 115, like you can start right now and it will literally shift every relationship in your life and also generations before you and all of it. So, mm-hmm. um, and behind you. So, and after you, so it's, it's really, it's really the one thing. So I'm really honored to be talking about it with you today. Well, I'm so grateful to have you. Such a great idea, by the way, to start just sharing in social media. You know, why why am I worthy? You know, what is it about me that makes me worthy? 
Yes, 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 exactly. And setting that example, because when we mm-hmm. set that example, all of a sudden our, our granddaughter sees it or our grandmother sees it. It, it. People see it and they start to think about it in themselves. That's the one beautiful thing about this discussion. I want to show you something before I forget. Yes. Um, in the, and, in the and tell everybody cover. when they can get your book, by the way. Yes. Okay. I'm yeah. so excited. So it is officially out as of February 20th. Um, and I'm so excited. And and, uh, and you can get Worthy everywhere books are sold. Mm-hmm. There's a um, on worthybook.com. It links out to all the stores that carry it. And, um, and there's like free thank you gifts and stuff. I'm donating 100% of the proceeds from the book. But I want to show you, um, I did this in the very back page. It oh, is like um, of the of the final hardcover, which, oh, oh, oh. which um, yeah. And so it's like, it's a li- an old school library card. Oh, it and is. Look at I'm that. imagining like <gasps> every woman when she gets her book, writing, you know, when she finishes it, writing her name in and writing the name of another woman, oh. um, just if she learned to believe how incredible she was, yes. right? Like, and then, and passing your book along. Um, and I'm praying for full library cards of women who just, who just share their book with someone once, once you're through it. It's, um, it is, yeah, I hope it's this tool and this resource that you pick up anytime yeah. you're starting to be tempted to doubt you are enough. Mm -mm, Amen, sister. And you are speaking to my generation with that library card. And I'm just going to throw in the Dewey Decimal System as well. (laughs) And bring us way back. That's awesome. (laughs) I love that. Jamie Kern Lima, I know you've got a full schedule, but thank you for making the time to be with us today. We just feel so blessed to have you and we wish you all the best. Thank you so much. I will see you again soon. Thank you so much for having me. So great to have Jamie today. I wish her all the best with her book. You know, I really believe that she is going to impact women and change lives and help women feel better about themselves, stronger and more assured to really tackle what it is that God has put inside them. Uh, We all have gifts to share. We all have seeds that are planted and it's what we do with it that really leads to our full potential. So thank you, Jamie, for breaking it down. Thank you for being with us. I want to thank you for being with me today. I love having you as a part of Over 50 and Flourishing. If you're watching here on YouTube, please don't forget, give us a thumbs up if you like the conversation today. Feel free to comment any thoughts or ideas in the comment section about what you heard today or even thoughts for future episodes of Over 50 and Flourishing. And as always, I ask you to subscribe to this channel, share me with those you love. Same thing applies if you're listening, by the way, on Spotify or Apple or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share. All these things matter to help grow this platform so I can get more people like Jamie Kern Lima to join us and to talk about all things worthiness. Thanks for being with me today. I'll see you next week. Support for today's episode comes from Jenny Kane. If you ever open your closet doors, scratch your head, and just struggle with, what do I wear today? How about taking the guesswork out of it? Jenny Kane is a California brand through and through, and their classic pieces make getting dressed easier than ever before. Hey, find your new uniform at JennyKane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code Dominique at checkout. That's 15% off your first order, J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com, promo code Dominique. Like getting dressed, be one less thing to worry about. Y'all, I have to share something funny with you. The other day, I got a photo from my friend Holly and her daughter, and they both had on their Bond Charge red light face mask. Yes, I am spreading the word because it works. They wanted to use them actually for different reasons. Holly was really interested in wrinkles and fine lines. Her daughter was more interested in acne and skin breakouts and whatnot. But they were so intrigued to learn that the red light face mask can help with other things like sore jaw, eczema, even migraine headaches. Can you believe that? Scar tissue, wound healing, razor burns, ingrown facial hair. I know that's really not a big thing for us ladies, but you know, maybe for our guys. I love my red light face mask. I too got it for wrinkles and fine lines. And I just think it makes such a difference. It's so easy to use only 10 to 20 minutes every day. You can put it on and clean the house and it's like no biggie, right? Just knock it out. They're both near infrared and red light boost collagen and elastin production. 
super lightweight on the face, and of course, it does not get hot. Uh, there's a one-year warranty and a super sleek, lightweight design. Again, I use mine for the same reason that Holly is, and it works. Go to bondcharge.com slash over 50 and use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash over 50 and use coupon code over 50 to save 15%.